There are questions about FATCA and human rights. The explosion and acceptance of extraterritorial laws has seriously damaged human rights and effectively designates human beings as property. And more countries are more and more treating their subjects as the U.S. does. So that's a prediction that is already starting to come true, which is that other countries are going to say, well, if Uncle Sam can do it, so can I. Hi, guys. It's Gene here. Hide and protect are not synonyms. The question of the day is, what is the Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act? If you think that offshore banking is only for the super rich and for drug dealers, you are sadly mistaken. I'm going to try to stick to facts, questions, and predictions. I do predict that many children on the global school yard are going to stand up to the schoolyard bully and say no more and avoid opinions. If I fail, which I probably will, it shows the importance of financial human rights. Feel free to thump me in the comments section. European banks do not want American clients. One of the most searched terms in the financial world here in late 2020 is what is the foreign account Tax Compliance Act. Suffice it to say, this is a very popular search term right now. It's a 2010 United States federal law requiring all non-U.S. foreign financial institutions to search their records for customers with indicia of a connection to the U.S. What they're doing is Uncle Sam is saying all non-U.S. foreign financial institutions, you must now comply to our new rule. And they're like, wait a minute, you don't have jurisdiction over us. And Uncle Sam says, well, that may be, but we can deny you access to our markets if you don't comply. And since we're the biggest and most lucrative market in the world, you will comply or we will shut you out. Okay? This sits ill with many countries, many foreign financial institutions, and many people who feel that Uncle Sam is bullying them into violating people's financial privacy. If you think financial privacy is something that exists, you're mistaken there too, because it doesn't. Now, you might think that many countries are going to say, up yours, Uncle Sam. We don't, we don't need to comply to that. But there's a lot of people who are. Now, there's, there's a lot of foreign financial institutions that say, fine, it's, this is too onerous. It's too expensive for us to implement and maintain. And we are just not going to take any American banking customers. You are a U.S. person. Even if you're not a U.S. citizen, you could be a permanent resident or a green card holder living abroad. And Uncle Sam still wants that. You, the only way to get out of this is to renounce your citizenship. I do predict that many children on the global schoolyard are going to stand up to the schoolyard bully and say no more. So I don't think this act is ever going to be repealed, but I do think that in many ways it is going to lose its teeth. Let's jump ahead, and this is why I prefer Wikipedia over Investopedia is because Investopedia only lightly glosses over some of the problems with it. Wikipedia, they make good coverage about the lies about the revenue that the people who wanted this told in order to get it passed. So this thing got ramrodded through under a Hires Act. Look at this. Hires Act is the hiring incentives to restore employment. You really got to be very gullible to believe the story that they told in order to pass this. So here's some of the criticism. Certain aspects of FATCA have been a source of controversy in the financial and general press. I think his name is Robert Stack. This guy, everything he says is a lie. He's a supposed treasury mythbuster. Here are the controversies. The cost, the benefits versus cost, possible capital flight, foreign relations, extraterritoriality, effect on accidental Americans, and citizenship renunciation. Oh, there's more, sorry. There's American citizens living abroad. There's a lack of reciprocity. There's reciprocity that's not authorized by Congress. The IRS is not equipped to handle this. There's complexity. There's identity theft account closures. There's additional complexity for U.S. persons. There are minimum requirements without limits on the upper end. The marketability of American financial products. There are income tax complications. There are questions about FATCA and human rights. There are questions related to FATCA and the European Union. There are duplicate reporting requirements and there are extreme penalties. The opposition includes congressional bills to re repeal FATCA. Senator Rand Paul introduced a bill in 2017. American Citizens Abroad Incorporated is a nonprofit organization claiming to represent the interests of the millions of Americans residing outside the United States. 
asserts that one of FATCA's problems is citizenship-based taxation. American citizens abroad called for the U.S. to institute residence-based taxation to bring the United States in line with all other OECD countries. Two American-Canadian dual citizens living in Canada, Virginia Hillis and Gwendolyn Louise Deegan, sued the Canadian government, specifically the Attorney General of Canada and the Minister of National Revenue, in 2014 in the Federal Court of Canada, claiming, among other things, that the intergovernmental U.S.-Canadian agreement that implements FATCA violates the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Oh, you got to read this. Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, it's a great one. It's basically the Canadian version of the Bill of Rights. Anyway, they lost. Big time lost. But I think there's going to be other challenges. There's going to be lots of other legal challenges, especially in Canada. Switzerland, too. This puts a bad taste in people's mouth. All right, so let's talk about criticisms. All right, let's go to foreign relations. Look at this. Forcing foreign financial institutions and governments to collect data on U.S. persons at their own expense and transmit it to the IRS has been called in divisive and imperialist. Canada's former finance minister, Jim Flaherty, raised an issue with the far-reaching and extraterritorial implications which would require Canadian banks to become extensions of the IRS and jeopardize Canadians' privacy rights. There are also reports of many foreign banks refusing to open accounts for Americans, which of course makes it harder for Americans to work and live abroad. All right, so that's one super big thing. And listen to this. The U.S. State Department actually admits that the rise in renunciation figures is related to U.S. taxation policy. The Wall Street Journal reported in July 2014 that FATCA worsens the already profoundly unjust tax treatment of millions of middle-class Americans living abroad. True. FATCA rules were intended to correct a tax loophole applied to Americans living abroad. They are absurd. That's not my opinion. That's somebody writing for the Wall Street Journal. There is no U.S. legislation to allow reciprocity. Here's where, listen to this, here's where Robert Stack accidentally spoke the truth. One of the things is the marketability of American financial products. European Parliament's Economic and Monetary Affairs Committee had a public hearing on FATCA back in 2013, and Robert Stack accidentally spoke the truth. He said, quote, I believe the members here present today and the participants understand that the United States uh, put its markets at risk in doing FATCA. End quote. Okay, so let me get this straight. I just want to make sure I understand this. Your position is that there is significant international interest in participating in FATCA compliance efforts? Okay, all right, you said it, buddy. Canada. Scotiabank in Canada has already spent almost $100 million in implementation cost. Australia, New Zealand, Europe including the UK, Germany, and Sweden. The United States, it costs them $380 million for implementation. Let's talk about the future. Let's talk about what it means for you. If you decide maybe your money is safer outside the jurisdiction of the United States, you don't want to leave. You like it here. I like it here. I think it's a great place. People are wonderful. Business climate is phenomenal. I've lived here my entire life here in the, these good old United States of America. It's a great place. But I'm non, uh, under no illusion that Uncle Sam and America are the same thing. Let's talk about renunciation of citizenship. People Googling how to get out of the United States. The numbers are at an all-time high. There was a presidential debate and there was a spike in people Googling how to move to Canada, which is pretty comical. The news reported that the debate was, quote, unwatchable, end quote. I certainly didn't or wouldn't watch it. So let's talk about this. The number of Americans renouncing their citizenship has risen each year since the enactment of FATCA from just 743 in 2009 to 3,415 in 2014, to 4,279 in 2015, and 5,411 in 2016. Among those who renounced was the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Boris Johnson, who did so after the United after the IRS taxed the sale of his house in London. This guy should have known that was going to happen. Why hadn't he previously renounced is a mystery to me. Due to the rise in applications and resulting backlog, the fee 
for renouncing citizenship was raised by roughly 400% in 2015 to 2350 bucks. I heard that it used to be free and then they made it 450 bucks, which is like, okay, I understand. It costs there's some administrative fees involved. 450 bucks, no big deal. But they raised it to $2,350. That's a big jump. Probably going to raise it again. And I think it's even higher if you have a net worth of $2 million. The 5,411 renunciations in 2016 were a 26% increase from the previous record set the year before. Renunciation of citizenship in the United States. That's a whole new topic, let's be honest. We don't want to talk about that today. I would say the big points, the big prediction is we already have pushback, okay? Identity theft. The IRS reports that identity thieves are using fraudulent compliance requests as a phishing to obtain sensitive account holder information. As of April 2015, more than 150,000 financial institutions throughout the world were storing social security numbers and asset values of U.S. citizens. That alone is reason enough to repeal this act. Here's where the weakness is in the Wikipedia entry. The Wikipedia entry talks about implementation costs, but what they don't do is go country by country and talk about the criticism. And they don't really go into American citizens living abroad. They make tiny mention here. They say the profoundly unjust tax treatment of millions of middle class Americans living abroad. The Guardian reports that Americans living abroad feel financially terrorized by FATCA requirements. So here's the problem with Wikipedia. They don't talk about it enough, the opposition, and they don't go country by country talking about the opposition. They only go country by country talking about the griping about the implementation cost. But they don't go country by country saying, you know what, this is what happened. And they don't talk about banks in places like Switzerland and probably the Caribbean and Central America, traditional tax havens that are just refusing to take U.S. customers now because of this. Let's try something different. Let's do institutions refuse comply FATCA. FATCA, the act that compels local financial institutions to comply with U.S. federal law. Misperceived as an act that only affects U.S. citizens and entities, it could be costly for Malaysian financial institutions. There's some uh, objection under Malaysia. European banks do not want American clients. Ellen Timmer, Juridische Artikelen in Berichten. European banks do not want American clients. FATCA. This is from August 2020, actually only two months ago. On this blog, I pay attention to the European accidental Americans, people who did not ask to become a U.S. person, but who, for example, accidentally have been born in the U.S. and return after a few years to Europe, and only after FATCA found out that they are a U.S. person. Not only are they in great trouble with banks and government, the same applies to the real Americans, people who have grown up in the U.S. and have come to Europe later in their life. Many of them have major problems with financial institutions in Europe. The most important reason? European financial institutions have to provide unpaid services to the U.S. tax authority. And they consider that to be too expensive. Another reason is that sometimes U.S. law applies to services provided to U.S. persons, something that does not make financial institutions happy either. I think this is an automatic translation. The articles on this subject show that the problems are increasing. One of the articles describes the position of European financial institutions of which very few have the type of compliance department that can handle complex U.S. regulations and heightened scrutiny. These American expats often are not in the position to give up their American nationality. One of my U.S. expat readers wrote, I would never want anyone to actively be forced or coerced to relinquish citizenship or denounce their heritage. I think the problem comes as U.S. laws treat people as foreign assets across the board, and the EU, as many areas, have effectively recognized and accepted that. The explosion and acceptance of extraterritorial laws has seriously damaged human rights and effectively designates human beings as property in specified circumstances whereby more countries are more and more treating their subjects as the U.S. does. So that's a prediction that is already starting to come true, which is that other countries are going to say, well, if Uncle Sam can do it, so can I. Where extraterritorial laws conflict for a certain person or entity, as with FATCA, the results are disastrous. 
Most countries limit the application of their laws to six months residency in a foreign state, but exceptions exist for every country. For example, in the Netherlands, sanctions are maintained that do not expire even when residency does. Pretty much all countries are now ramping up this inhumane treatment of people under the key word compliance. To me, compliance has become a dirty word and a cottage industry, and pretty much all countries are guilty for not having recognized this. Solving FATCA alone will not solve all this, but will probably make a difference that the trend starts to move in the other direction. It shows the importance of financial human rights. 2020 U.S. brokerage accounts of American expats are being closed. Americans abroad are being informed by U.S. banks and brokerage firms with increasing frequency that their accounts have been restricted or even closed due to their status as non-U.S. residents. This follows on the heels of widespread action by non-U.S. financial institutions to revoke and refuse services to expat Americans as a result of FATCA. First it was FATCA. Now MyFid2 has U.S. investors in Europe facing nightmares. This is 2019, less than one year ago. The last several years have been challenging for overseas Americans to open or maintain financial accounts in the U.S. and in their country of residence. For a variety of compliance and legal reasons, many U.S. banks and brokerage firms have been asking their long-standing overseas American clients to close their accounts. At the same time, due to FATCA compliance issues, many non-U.S. financial institutions have made it difficult or impossible for overseas Americans to work with them. The tax implications of opening a foreign bank account, Investopedia 2019. Most foreign banks nowadays do not want deposits from U.S. citizens, not even those in the traditional destinations such as Switzerland and the U.K. Their reluctance is due to the increased aggressiveness from the IRS and the DOJ. Foreign banks are only willing to devote so much time and energy to courting American clients, and very few have the type of compliance department that can handle complex U.S. Re regulations and heightened scrutiny. U.S. person status, financial restrictions for American expatriates in France, March 2019. When you are an American citizen and you plan to become a resident of France, you should be aware that having the status of a U.S. person can sometimes lead to unexpected consequences for your personal finances in France, particularly concerning whether or not you will be able to open a bank account. It's better first to prepare yourself to avoid some headaches and frustration. FATCA for U.S. Expats, the Ultimate Guide 2019. For foreign banks, the cost of FATCA compliance has been huge, costing more money globally than the IRS has recouped in new tax revenue. This was never about the revenue, people. Many foreign banks have in fact taken the view that the cost of FATCA compliance isn't worth having U.S. clients leading them to turn Americans away or close existing clients' accounts. This, in turn, has left some American expats unable to access banking or credit services in the country where they live. Access to banking and financial services. New banking services available for U.S. expats suffering due to FATCA. Guys, my prediction is that as other markets become more and more attractive and Uncle Sam's dominance on the global stage wanes, we're going to see more and more of this arrogance, and we're going to start to see more and more. I don't think this is going to end well. I hate to say this, but I think that this is the beginning of the end for the U.S. empire, and it's not going to be pretty. Let's go back to one more thing I want to look at in Wikipedia. Human rights. In a 2016 paper, academics argue that tax evasion can be directly linked to violations of human rights. This is bullcrap. That situation must be balanced against the risk that collection techniques violate other human rights like privacy and the legitimate protection of trade secrets. Okay, now look at this. This is super important. Let's jump to footnote 145 and let's see what we're talking about. We're talking about Avi Yona Ruven S. Mazzoni Gianluca, Taxation and Human Rights, a Delicate Balance. It's important to recognize that advocates of taxation of any form will use any hot button issue that they can think of in order to justify taxation. And since the war on some drugs has lost its luster, and since the war on some terror is losing its luster, they are now turning to things like, of course, global climate change, but also human trafficking and human rights, right? So human rights violators are tax evaders. Therefore, anybody who is against taxation is bad. Something like that. 
So you have to be very careful when you're talking about human rights and taxation because you have these people saying, well, tax evasion can be directly linked to human rights violations. But then again, collection techniques also violate human rights. So I would advise my children, nieces and nephews, family and friends to be very careful when you hear people talking about the delicate balance between one set of human rights violations and another set of human rights violations. And I want to remind everybody that humans are some of the cleverest and most adaptable creatures that have ever existed on this planet. If humans were to set their mind about it and say, taxation is not the means we want to employ to achieve the ends of social justice, we will find other ways. And yes, I said we. Let's talk more about human rights. Privacy and data protection legislation in Europe. Civil rights such as the right to privacy or the right to data protection as a taxpayer are compromised by FATCA and IGA, intergovernmental, uh, intergovernmental agreements. There is no provision in FATCA for the protection of taxpayer rights, complains legal researcher Leopoldo Parada. The Association of Data Protection Supervisors is working on the case. As for other data protection legislation in Europe, for instance, the Swedish law, I'm not going to try to say that, person upgifts login or personal data law requires unforced consent of the individual in order to send data to a third country. The need for the information must also be greater than the need for the person's integrity. It is forbidden to deliver data that is not protected to a level adequate to EU standards. FATCA and the ECHR, that's the European Convention on Human Rights. That includes all EU member states. All parties of the European Convention on Human Rights are bound by its provisions, including the interpretation through the case law of the European Court of Human Rights. Each law must have respect for an individual's private life except in cases of the state's or population safety or the country's economic health. FATCA's data are not used for the benefit of any EU member state, and EU members' economic health is not improved by FATCA. It only avoids the threatened 30% tax sanctions by complying with it. EU requirements limiting data sharing. FATCA does not fulfill the EU requirements limiting data sharing, which allows sharing to be done only with organizations following the now invalidated safe harbor principles. The IRS is not listed. The IRS is not listed as meeting this demand. EU member state requirements that bank accounts be opened. Many EU countries require banks to open accounts for applicants because in some places this is the only way to receive a salary. FATCA's mechanism to close bank accounts, if FATCA demands are not met, violates such laws. New FATCA IGA requirements demand that banks shall not open accounts for U.S. persons or accounts for non-U.S. persons if the individual refuses to declare a U.S. person status upon bank account applications. Most of the human rights stuff in Wikipedia is about privacy, but privacy and financial privacy are two different things, and let's be honest, neither one exists. FATCA or no FATCA. Thanks for watching.